Right. So let's try to understand what is co-sequential processing. Now let's take an example where we have two lists. Not necessarily they're sorted. Uh, if they're not sorted, we can sort it. Now in the program that we are going to see next, we are going to have two lists, two separate files, one.txt and two.txt. And in the file, we have these names written in them. So what we're going to do is, we're going to read each one of these two files, populate it into an array and sort it. So now the lists that you've seen here are sorted. So before that, we would have read those uh, names from the files. So this is list one from 1.txt. This is list two from 2.txt. Now, co-sequential processing is about sequentially processing two different lists or two or more than two lists. So in the next lab program, we're going to see something called scale emerge, something like that. This program, that is the seventh one, is about uh, matching all those names that are there in two different lists and coming up with something called as a match list, right? So there, there are n number of such applications where we need to match uh, the uh, names that are there in two different lists and coming up with a match list, right? Say for example, uh, there is a uh, attendance shortage list of two subjects and then we want a, a common uh, student list which in which uh, you know there are there are repetitions of the same name and then we want to all the I mean, list of all the students who have a shortage in at least one subject then we can use co-sequential processing processing and come up with a list of all the students who have shortage uh, subject one subject two no matter how many subjects right so this is one such example and you can also think about um, electoral uh, list where uh, you know that um, no two uh, no, no single person can be enrolled in two different lists of two different areas so we will have to come up with uh, a match list and then delete all those names in this particular list and make sure that they're there in only a single list so there are n number of such applications of co-sequential processing now let's see how exactly it's going to work now when uh, when we have these two lists naturally in an array so we're going to start from the first name of each of these so we see the first name we compare them so in this case there is a match right abhiman and abhiman so what we're going to do the moment there is a match case we're going to write that name in the match list here right and then advance the pointers one step ahead in both the lists right so we're going to go one step ahead in both the lists now we're going to again compare whichever is greater we're going to stay there whichever is in whichever list has the smaller name right so we're going to go one step ahead there so again we're going to compare so in our case this is bigger this is smaller so we go we're going to go one step ahead in this list Right. So again, we're going to compare Oscar and Sima. So we know that Sima is S is greater than B. So we're going to go one step ahead in list one. Now, why are we going one step ahead in that list where we have a smaller and we're going to stay wherever we are in the list which have a bigger, bigger name or the name that comes later uh, alphanumically. So because we can expect in the other list that there can be names right so that's the reason we are advancing only in that list which has got a smaller uh, or a name that comes earlier now we're going we're going to compare again see my s is greater than c so we're going to advance in this list once again now we're going to compare one in sima we know that v is greater so we're going to go one step ahead here now we're going to compare Varni and Varni. Now we got a match case. So we have written that here. Right? And then we're going to again. So the moment we get a match case, we are supposed to go one step ahead in both the lists. Right? So our pointer is now here. So Vinay can Vinay. We know that 
this is greater so we're gonna go one step ahead here in this case so now there is a match case so we write that here and say for example this has got one more name and this is the end of the list here in list 2 say for example we have uh, something called as um, the mirror or something and this list is null now once we got a match case here we're going to advance in both the lists but we found that list 2 has ended so now is there anything to compare further no so even though we have or we may have some other names in either of the list we're going to stop the process of co-sequential process because there's nothing to compare in the other list right so finally at the end of the uh, iteration what we got is a match list this is how co-sequential processing and co-sequential matching actually works right so this is seventh lab program in your know, file structure so write a c++ program to read two lists of names and then match the names in two lists using co-sequential match based on a single loop output the names common to both the lists now this is what we are supposed to write the program for so what we're going to do is before executing these programs make sure you have two files 1.txt and 2.txt which contain this of the names so keep some common names in both the lists since the objective of the program is to uh, find the match between two different lists so how is it that we're going to run this so read the list from the file and store it in two different arrays read list is the function that is going to do that and then we need to sort the arrays using any other sorting technique maybe bubble sort that is used here sort list and then the next one is match the two sorted arrays and display the common names so that is match list in the TA, match list function <coughs> So this is a listing for that. So we have something called as class co-sequential in which we have two different lists with whatever is the size. And then we have two counts just to keep sure, make sure that uh, uh, the count is greater than zero because we need to process and take a call on whether we need to continue the uh, processing or not. And then read list as we just now saw, sort list and match list. So in the main function, we're simply going to create an object of co-sequential class. We're going to call it a C. And then we say read lists and sort lists. So we'll see what read list does. Read list is going to open two files for you. One is 1.txt, input mode, again, read mode, right? And then uh, after we read, after we open that file in read only mode we are going to read each of these lines right one at a time every na every line contains a name so we will read that into it and then put that in the list list 1 and count 1 dot here, so count 1 plus plus so we are going to put the name and then in increment the index and this index is going to give us exactly how many number of names are there in that particular list very similarly Count, is equal to, count 2 is equal to 0 so we have opened the second file it's same thing in the input mode and every line when we read we are going to put that in list 2 and then in count 2 we will have how many number of names is there are there in second list so exactly after reading the two lists we are supposed to sort them and then we just now saw that we can use any of the techniques that we know so here in this case uh, the moment you see this swapping so you should know that it is bubble sort that we are using so we use bubble sort and we have sorted list one so we have also displayed what is there in the sorted list and then similarly we sort the second list and we also display what is there in the second list now after sorting we are supposed to display this uh, common names how do we get the common names we're going to call the function match lists so the moment you call match lists it comes here and does this so this is exactly what we saw in the board discussion that we just now saw so 
the moment till we're going to do this in a single loop so what is the condition for that so both the list should be having names the moment one the list becomes empty as in uh, there are no more names that you have not touched or end of the list right at that time we're going to stop this so t until then we're going to continue so uh, even if one of the list says i'm i'm done this is the end of the list then we're going to come out of this we're going to stop this while loop right now initially we're going to start from zero and zero so for the first two names of the first two lists compare right if there is a match case we know what to do if, if there is a match case there is this other list that we're going to build or we're simply going to display that so because there is a match case in both the lists, the same name is there so we're going to simply display it and what are we going to do advance in both the lists so i plus plus and j plus plus so we can say advance one step in list one and similarly here we're going to say advance one step in list two so when there is a match this is a match case so when there is a match case you're simply going to display it and then advance in both the lists otherwise if the name in list one is greater right so what are we going to do here we're going to advance in uh, in fact it's the other case that i just told you list one contains a lesser value and list two contains a greater value so in that case we are supposed to advance in list one so here it is other way around here the list one contains a greater value and this two contains a lesser value so here we are supposed to advance in list two right so this is something which we are going to do until one of the list doesn't contain any other names we have reached the end of the list right so once we reach end of the list of one of the lists also we are going to stop this match list right so this is where we are displaying all the uh, names that we got where there is a match case so this is exactly how uh, you know the sequential matching actually works let's run the seventh program that is sequential match and uh, see what the output look like so uh, even before we start the program we should make sure that we have files with us that is 1.txt and 2.txt uh, so let's explore what is there in 1.txt so we have the following names and in 2.txt we have uh, the following names right so we, we can see that they are not sorted and there are few uh, repetitions right so which we are supposed to output as match cases so now let's run the program fs07 so the moment we run it so we get these as the output so sorted contents of list 1 is so and so the sorted cont of list contents of list 2 is so and so and common names in both the lists are Amavadi Raja and Vishruta. So this is exactly what is going to happen in the seventh program that is co-sequential match.